Hello, everyone. Thank you for being patient with us. We've had quite a lot of technical difficulties this morning. Say this Wednesday, very much Monday, but we're doing our best. So thank you for joining us. I'm going to do our best to get you out of here still by one o'clock. Sound good, Angela? <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, so let's introduce ourselves. Hello, officially. My name is Sarah Berkhoven. I am the registered dietitian for the YMCA of the Capital Area. Hello everyone, my name is Angela Jordan and I am with Southern University Ag Center. So welcome to Food Prep 101, a collaborative event between the YMCA and Southern Ag University. Did I say that right? Southern University Ag Center. Southern Keep University Ag Center. There we go. Um, so we're going to talk about how to meal prep, how to make meal prepping easier while also highlighting the All of Us Research Project. And the All of Us Research Program is open to anyone. We are inviting all participants from all backgrounds to join our database that will make history. It's going to be a health database where it will be able to go in and detect and find out what exactly is going on with each individual is going to help our biology, our lifestyle, and our environment. These researchers are ready and they are ready to help you. And they're going to try to make sure that all of the information that they gather from all of the participants, like you all, will help to treat and prevent diseases. Wow, right? Wow. We're all in, yeah. all of us. All of us, that's exactly right. So, Let's talk a little bit more about food prepping. So maybe you food prep, maybe you don't. There are many ways to food prep, whether it's cooking big batches and divvying it up as you go along the week, or cooking a big batch and then portioning it out and just grabbing and going that meal. Either way is totally fine. So today we're going to show you how we do it. What I love about meal prepping is that you basically cook and then kind of set for the week. So it sets you up for a little bit more success. You don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, what I'm going to eat today. It's already in the fridge. Makes life a little bit simpler. I know for many years I got so caught up in like, oh my gosh, I need to cook something for dinner. And I was so worried about finding all these recipes. And then each recipe had 18 ingredients. So you're going to the store to buy this big old bottle of whatever it is. And you're using like a teaspoon of it. Then that goes to waste. And that's a headache that costs you money. So I'm here to tell you, it does not have to be that complicated. The simplest way to go about it is you make a protein, you make some veggies, and you have a gravy. And you mix and match those together and it creates as easy as that. And that's okay. it. We're going to use only a few ingredients to make different recipes. Yes. Healthy breakfast. Yes. And today we're going to show you kind of like a Mediterranean style lunch for the week, but you can definitely do this with like Hispanic flavors, Asian flavors, anything you want, whatever goes to your liking. So to get started, what you want to do when you meal prep is to think about what part of your dish is going to take the longest. A lot of times if you're roasting vegetables, that tends to take the longest. So first off, make sure you preheat your oven. What I do is pretty much cook every vegetable that I ever roast is on 400 degrees because it seems to work, so I change it. So 400 degrees, you're going to preheat your oven, and then we're going to start chopping our vegetables. Today we are going to use some peppers. We have red, orange, and yellow. Um, some red onion, and then we also are going to roast some tomatoes. Just grab a sheet pan here, and Angela's going to start chopping everything for me. And what Angela and I have agreed that we both do and like is having a trash bowl so it may not be in screen but it's very easy to just dump all your seeds and your pith right into the trash bowl that way you don't have to run to the trash can 85 times and then you don't know this Angela, but what i love to do any little top or whatever goes in my compost trash bowl that i can feed to my pet tortoise i do i have a pet tortoise he's like 60 pounds his name is thunder i talk about him all the time but he loves bell pepper so usually i'll save the tops for him and he'll get a little treat that's another way to utilize your trash and make sure it's not so much food waste. Bell peppers are great. These different colors give us different vitamins and minerals. They have a lot of vitamin C and A and 
it's tasty. Kind of like a roasted red pepper thing we got going on for that Mediterranean flair. And it also gives it a great appearance. It does. Presentation. Exactly. Because we eat with our eyes first. It doesn't look good. You don't want to take a big bite of it, right? So these tomatoes are already washed and ready to go. You're not even going to cut them. Roast them whole. They'll get softer and kind of pop open. That's going to give you some juice. Going to make, going to kind of give like a, already a juice or a dressing for our, our dishes that we're going to put together. So all I do is just dump them right Oh, and we have Emily behind the screen today. She probably will never make an appearance, but she is here. So I'm talking to Emily. I'm asking her if I'm in the camera, what, in the shot or whatnot. And also, if you have any questions throughout this webinar, feel free to pop them in the chat. Emily will either stop us as we go if it's a pressing question. But if not, we'll try and allow some time at the end to answer questions. So everyone say hi, Emily. So you can keep your bell peppers separate colors. I don't because they're all going to get mixed together. It does look really nice on the pan. Great. And for time purposes, we're just doing about half of these vegetables. If you are cooking for more people, do more vegetables. If you're cooking for just yourself, do less vegetables. Right? That's the great thing about this. It's like you can fit it on the sheet pan, you go. Probably enough for maybe one person. I did about half of each vegetable. I like a lot of onions. So I'd probably add some more. Um, are there any other vegetables that you like to roast them with? Broccoli and cauliflower. Yeah, I eat, I cook broccoli a lot. I'll do green beans as well. Sometimes, if I'm fancy, I'll do Brussels sprouts. They are in season right now, so to do. And I have found a new vegetable that I like to roast. Oh yeah, do tell. Garlic. Oh, yeah, wait. You Fresh just, roasted You garlic. just discovered this? <laughs> yes. Wait a minute. Hold on. We just discovered roasted garlic? Yes. I love it on everything. I just love garlic in general. And roasted garlic is a whole different story. Garlic, if you're like not a fan or if you cut, cut fresh garlic, it can be kind of like sharp and like pointed, like a little overwhelming at times. But when you roast it, it takes on like a sweeter flavor and it becomes into like a mash and there was salt. It's uh, not. It's hard. My mouth has started to water. I need to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Roasted garlic. Yes. It's delicious. Try. It is. It is. And you just roast the whole bowl, right? The whole. The whole. That's what I do. Yeah. And potatoes are really great to roast. Root, root vegetables, all things like that. So you can do like a sheet pan of root vegetables, and that would work really well with this Mediterranean lunch tip. So now that we have our vegetables chopped, I'm going to season it. All I do is just give it a nice drizzle of olive oil. And a little tricky when you got a bottle like this. But. Then I do salt, pepper, and garlic. <laughs> Season to your taste. Yes. And this salt, pepper, garlic, maybe even onion powder if you want, you can't go wrong. But what you can do is add other things. So sometimes if I'm feeling spicy, I'll add some chili flakes. If you want to go like more Mediterranean or Italian, you can have Italian seasoning. So I'm just gonna kind of make sure everything gets coated in olive oil here. Spread it around. It's okay if they mix, like I said. Now these vegetables cook at a similar time. So they're all, they're not super hardy. They'll cook in about 15 to 20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. But if you're doing something like a root vegetable or potatoes, they're gonna take 30, 40 minutes. Just be mindful when you are putting vegetables together, you wanna make sure they cook at the same time. You can do two different sheet pans if you wanted to do potatoes, for example, just have them in separately so you can control when you take them out. 
So once they're all coated, I'm going to pop them in the oven and then we're going to move on to our next one. So that they'll be in for about 20 minutes or so. All right, as I'm getting ready for the next one, do you need to share that a little something? Yes, else? the floor is now mine. The floor is yours. <laughs> like Sarah said, while she is prepping for the next recipe, I just want to mention to you all something about the All of Us Research Program. We all know that our health is very important to us. Last month, the month of October, was health literacy. The All of Us Research Program would like to encourage everyone to just become more aware of your health. And how can you do this? How can you improve your health literacy? By simply speaking with your health care provider. Your health care provider can have that conversation with you and the two of you all can talk and he can answer questions that you may have how you can better your health conditions. Okay, so what do you have going on? Uh, okay, so now I'm working on our grain component. Today we have quinoa. How do you feel about quinoa, Angel? She already told me before I know the answer, but she's going to tell us all. I'm just going to smile. <laughs> I get, I've tried it, but it's not one of my favorites. I've tried it different ways. It's still not one of my favorites, but I'm going to try it again. That's all I ask. <laughs> <laughs> so that is totally fair. Quinoa can be kind of scary because, I mean, like, even look how it's spelled. Like, sometimes it's like, how do we even say, say that? Right? So quinoa is a, a, a grain. It's a grain. It's a grain, really, but it acts like a grain. So... Quinoa, what you do today so I can show you how to cook it. But if you're not feeling the quinoa, totally fine. Keep in mind you have rice, brown rice, couscous, pasta, any type of grain will work here. So the great thing about quinoa is that it does have protein in it. So it helps to like punch up your dish, especially if you're vegetarian or vegan and are looking for some added sources of protein. Quinoa is a really great way to do it. And then keep in mind too, it's kind of boring by itself. So you want to make sure that you're flavoring it, and it does take on flavors pretty well. So if you didn't like it, maybe it was because it wasn't seasoned super well, and that's quite possible. I ate it plain. That might, that might be it. Now, so she's going to try it again, and she still might not, might not like it, but then I'll let it go. So what you also be mindful of is quinoa needs to be rinsed before it is cooked. There's like a kind of like a powdery coating on it that's natural in quinoa, and if you don't rinse it off, it can cause the quinoa to be really bitter. So maybe if you tried quinoa before and you didn't like it, maybe you didn't rinse it. Some quinoa comes already pre-rinsed, but this one is not. This is also a tri-color blend. It comes in red, white, and black. This is all the store has, so we're gonna go with tri-color, because why not? Why not? Why not? So I have it in a fine mesh uh, colander here. So <clears throat> I would usually do this at the stove, but to show you, I'm just gonna pour water over it. Good call, good call. I'm gonna try not to be too messy. I'm kinda messy when I cook, but you know what? It's fine, I just can't back. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell, but the water is kinda cloudy. So that's all that bitterness that we're rinsing off. So we don't need this, we wanna get rid of that. And then we're gonna cook our quinoa. It's one part quinoa to two parts water. So quinoa also triples in size when you cook it. And then keep in mind how much you need for, you, for yourself or for your family. So we're gonna cook today for about one person. So I'd say about half a cup of quinoa, one cup of water. Put the water in and bring it to a boil and then add your quinoa, reduce to a simmer, and then cook it for about 15 to 20 minutes. Do you wanna add that in? Hardest part of getting out the stringer sometimes. Kind of good so bring your water to a boil, add your quinoa. If you add your quinoa at the same time, it's not that big of a deal. I like to cover it when I cook. So you just want to cook it, let all the water dissolve, take it off the heat. You can fluff it and let it sit. When you fluff it, that's when the quinoa kind of really pops open. And then it'll start to look, instead of like little grains or seeds, it looks like teddy bear stuffing to me the way it pops open. So we're going to get this cooking. 
I'm on me. No, no, not shame on you. Honestly, it's like convenient. It's convenient to buy whatever at the store. And I do it too. Look, I have dressings in my refrigerator. And then I also like, oh, let me just whip out a quick dressing. I think a lot of times people think that it's really complicated. It's not. It's really not. And what I love to do is just make it right in a mason jar because you can shake it and then store it. So, like, taking one piece of the puzzle out. So, for this Greek vinaigrette, it's going to be a third of a cup of red wine vinegar. So, usually dressing is equal parts or so acid or vinegar and or lemon juice, whatever it is, and olive oil. I'm gonna get there one day. Okay. So add my red wine vinegar. Then, this is my cutting this for me. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. This helps to emulsify it, but also give it some tang. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of minced garlic. Remember what I said earlier? I like that. Uh, You all can't smell it, but it smells so good. So fresh. And that's what I love about like fresh dressing. You use fresh ingredients and it really brightens the dish. That was all I am. I like a lot of lemon. Well, and part of it is it's kind of like equal parts vinegar and olive oil, but we need the lemon to add part of that acidity. We're going to do half a teaspoon of oregano, about a fourth of a teaspoon of salt and pepper. Anybody got any questions yet, Emily? Everybody's probably eating their lunch. We're getting hungry. We're getting hungry, absolutely. So at this point, if you were making it in a bowl, you would want to add your olive oil last and whisk your olive oil into the rest of it. So that really forces the fat and the olive oil to be forced into the rest of the mixture. It's like oil and water don't mix, oil and vinegar don't mix unless you force them to. That's what dressings are, they're called emulsions. So it really doesn't matter when you add the olive oil here because we're going to shake it all together. So I have half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. Screw the lid on tight. Never made that mistake yet, but I'm sure it'll happen at some point. Get it all over me. And then, do you want to do the other? My favorite part. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so that's nice part. You can see it all combines together, and it's one unified dressing. All right. Then, our last thing is we're going to just process our, process our chicken a little bit. So, as I mentioned before, we we have a rotisserie chicken here for ease of meal prepping. If you've 
never shopped at Sam's or Costco, you know, they're a good deal there. They're like super cheap, and that's really what gets you in the door. So, rotisserie chicken is an easy way to just make your meal prep even faster. If you want to make your own chicken, you can cook to whatever it may be. Keep an eye on things like shrimp or fish or fried meat, turkey. Your protein can be whatever you want. We're just taking the breasts here. That should be enough for us. These meals here. Again, if you have more people to cook for, go ahead and process the whole chicken. And then keep in mind you can use it for other things. So I bought artistry chicken and made like burritos, and I've made chicken salad. What else have I made? I don't know, but sandwiches, something like that. Do you ever use artistry chicken? Chicken quesadilla. There you go. Have a <laughs> chicken quesadilla. That's a great one. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so we have our vegetables cooked. Let's show you. So when our vegetables are done, they're nice and roasted. Roasted? Roasted? I don't know. <laughs> but they have no like glistening. They've softened. You can see the tomatoes have kind of punctured. The colors have mixed together. It smells delicious. Can't wait to try. Yes. And then we have our quinoa. It's nice and fluffy. You can see it. I don't know if you can see it that well. But I kind of like teddy bear stuffing. Yeah. So, and then our dressing. And now we're going to get to prepping our lunches. So give us a moment. We will. Well, I will clear the area, and I'm telling you, do you want to share one more thing with us? Yes. Like we said in the beginning, this is a collaboration with the All of Us Research Program. This month, the month of November, is Diabetes Awareness. The All of Us Research Program would like to focus this year. Diabetes. Pre-diabetes touches at least one out of three U.S. adults. They have pre-diabetes, they don't. The good news is it can be reversed if you just simply start small by changing your everyday eating habits. Absolutely. So pre-diabetes is something that I am passionate about because it's fixable. Predisposed to have diabetes and diabetes and they don't even know. And there's a lot of miscommunication out there about diabetes that, oh, I'm not, I don't like sweet, so I'm not, it doesn't apply to me. It's not how it works. So Anything that is carbohydrate, that breaks down into sugar. So that's a lot of foods, but not that carbohydrates are bad because we still need carbohydrates too. So I really encourage you to speak to your physician, see your registered dietitian that they're talking about. And keep in mind, you just want to focus on exercising, moving, losing weight, oh, like overweight and obesity are the number one factors of prediabetes. Correct. If you have hypertension, or if you have certain ethnicities like African American, Northern Pacific Islander, Hispanic, you're more predisposed. If you have a family member who has prediabetes, diabetes, type 1, type 2, if you had gestational diabetes when you were pregnant, you were a woman, you're more predisposed. If you're not physically active, you're also more predisposed. So there's a lot of things in there that you can control. Some, unfortunately, you can't, like our genetics, but making a change about the things you can is very important to start now. Don't wait until it picks up on you. That's right. Get ahead of it. Start small. Start small. And meal prepping can be a good way to do it. That's too. right. <laughs> Making healthy choices and preparing for that week so you're not trying to do that Chick-fil-A line when you're like starting out your head. That's right. That's right. All right. So let's get to assembling here. I have these containers at my house. They're like meal prep containers, but you can put them in any containers you want, Tupperware, whatever. This is just easy for me. I recognize in the fridge that these are the meals for the week. And everything else is like, oh, that's the leftovers. So I grab a go, one of these, mix and match. So we have our dressing, our vegetables, our quinoa, and our chicken. And then I also grabbed a few more items just to spruce up our meals. So you also would need some other toppings. I really like olives with Greek food. 
Mediterranean food, some feta cheese, because some cheese. I popped open a can of chickpeas. They also have some hummus. You know, hummus comes in like so many flavors these days. You can make it yourself, but for ease, just buy whatever you want. <laughs> There's that garlic again. Yeah, what flavor do you want? <laughs> Love garlic. There's garlic. And then you'll need some greens and pita. All right, so let's show them how to make a Greek rainbow. Sound up. Sounds good. All right, so we have first, I have our Tupperware. We're going to take about a half a cup of quinoa. Dump that in. You're going to add some chicken. And Tom. There's the Tom. We're gonna add some chicken to it and then we're gonna add some vegetables. And then to give it a little zhuzh, we'll add about a tablespoon or two. I put it on really tight. <laughs> tablespoon or two. Oh, some dressing here. It's already started to separate. I'm just gonna uh, make sure it tastes good. I'm just gonna drizzle it over everything. Launch one is done. Easy, right? Easy. Okay, so you can make a couple of those. We're going to show you three different ways, three different lunches. You can make multiples of the same, or you can even make different versions. Okay, let's do um, a Greek salad. So we'll start with our base, lettuce. About two cups. This bowl is a little small. I would suggest a bigger bowl. For a little protein, a little grain, we're going to add a little bit of quinoa. Just for a different texture. Then, we're going to add some chickpeas. So this is kind of like that hummus flavor. Hummus is kind of hard to put in a salad. You can do it. It just doesn't mix very easily. Some cheese and feta. Some olives. And then let's add some veggies. Get some tomatoes, onions, peppers. You can add chicken, but with the quinoa and the chickpeas, you got a little protein in there. And then we'll give it our dressing. Lunch Tuesday. All right. And then the last one, you can do a pita. So I have a whole wheat pita. We cut that in half. Let's see if it'll open. Awesome. You grab a knife. Give us some hummus in there. And then maybe add that chicken in there. Yeah, put it in a little pocket, a little pita pocket. Great. What do you say? Some veggies? Why not? Why not? They're here, right? And the veggies help to add vitamins, minerals, fiber to our diet. Gives you that color, different textures. We'll add in some feta and olives. And then finish it with stuffing it with some nuts. There you go. A little peanut pocket. One more. Lunch 
lunch three is done. So the only thing I would recommend here is that if you make a salad, probably wait to add your greens until the night before, or if it's Sunday meal prep, maybe eat that one first, maybe on Monday. And like I said, you can make maybe two of each, and that way you have you have six meals, but that's the easy way to do it. Pick your least favorite one, don't make that one twice, I don't know. <laughs> and then other things that you can do with these same ingredients off the top of my head is like what I love to do with pita, make a little pita pizza. So if I have, so you could even use hummus as the base, but if you have maybe like a red sauce or something in the pantry or in the fridge, add that on. I'll add chicken, olives, feta, my roasted vegetables, and I'll pop it in the tin strudge or air fryer, really good in the air fryer, and like under 10 minutes, you have this pita pizza. Super easy, and that way they don't go to waste. What else could you do? You could do... Just be creative. Use yeah. your imagination with the ingredients that you have. Right. You can do other types of salads, other types of grain bowls, leaving out the chicken, adding in more chickpeas, changing the protein. Just trying to reiterate here that you can take four ingredients and add whatever's in your fridge and make all different types of lunches. So you're eating the same thing, so you're not wasting food, but you're not getting bored over the week. And it's all healthy. It is, right? All healthy. Awesome. Well, that's really it. I hope that shows, this shows you that this is not, meal prepping shouldn't be complicated. Remember, you don't need 85 recipes with 45 ingredients a piece. Keeping it simple works out a lot better sometimes. Does anybody have any questions? No questions? All right. Is there anything else that you know, Prep Angel? Do you have any like successful or like favorite things that you prep ahead of time? No, don't. You don't. I don't meal prep, so this was a lesson for me. Oh, what do you usually do? Do you cook dinner every night? I cook dinner every night. Well, that's awesome too. I wish I wish I could do that, but my <laughs> schedule like just does not allow me sometimes. And so to make my life easier, I do my best meal prep, and sometimes it doesn't happen. Like I'll be honest. With it doesn't happen, but you know, do your do your best that you can, make the most of it, and keep in mind just try and keep a nice balanced meal with greens, veggies, fruit, or protein. Just balancing it out, getting good fiber, good healthy fat, keeps us full and satisfied and helps us not be hangry. Um, you can also meal prep prep breakfast. Don't forget about breakfast. Most important meal of the day, overnight oats, breakfast bowls, breakfast sandwiches egg cups, all types of things. That's a whole different topic. We won't go there today. I'm just saying you can keep in mind uh, meal prep works for breakfast too. So you are bounded by the imagination that you have, right? As, That's right. As creative as you can get, creative as your meals can get. But there's no other questions. We guys will let you guys go. Enjoy the rest of your lunch hour. Once again, my name is Sarah Burkhoven. I'm the registered dietitian for the YMC of the Capital Area. My name is Michelle Jordan. I'm with Southern University Ag Center. We will send out this recording once we get it downloaded, and we'll send it out to you via email. We'll also send you a link for the All of Us Research Program if you're interested in learning more about that. We hope you guys have enjoyed this. It's been interesting. I hope you've learned something, a thing or two, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your Wednesday. Thank you very much.